Yeah, hi. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I just want to know when, like, after what type of instructions do you issue a system? Like, do you issue a system anyhow? No, you issue a Cisco if you're looking for an operating service that you want to make use of. Print something, exit a program. Yeah. This is when you issue a Cisco because a Cisco is just a signal to, to the computer, in this case, QT Spin, to say, tell the kernel that I'm interested in this service, I want to use this service. Yeah. Okay, now, let's say I put the user to input a number. Yeah. And then that number, let's say, uh, yeah, it's uh, the same register B0 for printing an integer. That's what? Four. No. Four. One. One. Ah, four, yeah. Well, for reading a screen, okay. So, like, it's not four. Input. It's eight. Eight. Let's say I'm, I'm asking a user to, like, let's say, uh, write a number, enter a number. That same one is in the B0 register. Yeah. The same string. It's not uh, a string, you're saying a number. There are two things there. Mm -hmm. There's a string, then there's a number. Yeah. Let's, can we just put the board here? We try to write this code here. No, not the board. Let's do it here. Yeah, so you're saying? Let's say, write that. Right, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, we're writing like that. Yeah, the actual code. Yeah. So, no, no, we have that. Okay. Message one. Semicolon. Yeah, Full colon. Yeah. Full colon. Okay. Then, like, uh, ask me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Enter a number. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go on text. Right? Yeah, we'll text. <laughs> so we want to print this. Okay. Then load with A B A A zero. The same message one. Yeah. You issue Cisco. Uh -huh. Now before you <laughs> then when the user enters the what? This message goes into this one. So, no. That's not going to this register. Argument register. You see what you're doing is you're load you're saying load there's not nothing going in your register, you're just saying load the address of yeah. this data, this piece of text, which yeah. is data and memory. Load the address into this register. Okay. What you're loading is the address. You cannot load the entire thing into a register. Why? Register is 32 bits, right? How long is this going to be? How long is this message? How many bits is this? Eight, 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 eight. eight. eight, eight, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen times eight. What is sixteen times eight? Can't fit, right? Won't happen. Can won't happen, right? Doesn't work like that. How many did we count? 16 times 8. Yeah, yeah. So what you're loading is the address. In so fact, it's a beginning address of this data. Yeah. So now, here, uh, it, will, it will show on the console. Yeah. But now the user will enter like one. OK. Yeah. So it, this is the same address we use for printing mm -hmm. and integer. So yes. Do I have to get this mess, the address out first before I put an integer here? No, you don't have to. Because you see, we said this, and, and the reason why we started our discussion of cache, registers, CPU, fetch decode cycle is we wanted to understand what we're doing. Yeah. Registers are temporal memory locations. Yeah. You don't have to remove what is in the register, you just overwrite what is in there. So the, the, when, how do you print an integer? get we load. No, not Cisco, but we. What do you load? What do you want to load? Load. Uh, Cisco. Cisco. Load Cisco. You can't. No, no. It's, just, it's just Cisco. Why? Okay, for, why are for we. For printing an integer. 
Why are we calling this school here? Guys. For printing an integer? Are you, are, you, are you crazy or something? Listen. <laughs> Sir, printing an integer. If you're printing an integer, right? Uh, you load. You the question you should ask yourself is, what do you want to print? If you're printing yeah. an integer, what are you printing? So I have to, to, we have to put now this. Here's the thing here. Is there anything, excuse me, is there anything syntactically wrong with what you've done here? <laughs> is there something wrong with what we've done? Hey. Is there anything selected wrong with what we've done here? I have to put first the number. Mm, one. Yeah, yeah, I know, but is there anything? Look at what happens here, right? There's nothing seductively wrong. What are you going to print? Nothing. What will we? What will be printed? Just the, the message. Mm. What is loaded in A zero in number eight? A0. Address of the thing is what you print. Observe. If you print this, you see this number here. Yeah. This number here is the address of the same me message you're printing. <laughs> Look at this. What you said here, right, is you're saying you you're saying you want a user to enter a number, right? Yeah. And then here you want to print. Yeah. But because because system call one prints an integer, you must specify what you want to print. How do you specify? You specify what you print by putting the value you want to print into A0. But because you've not specified what you want to print and it, and A0 has a value, what is the value of A0? The register, or I mean the address of this string. So what you're printing here is the, the address. The message. This, this value here, 26, is the address. Yeah. In memory. Do you understand this? Yeah. So we have to overwrite the message, the address. Yes, yeah, so you have to specify what you wish to print, right? Yeah. How do you specify what you wish to print? Move to A0, the value that you wish to print. So maybe at some stage, maybe you had a load into 8, the value 5. And then you'd move to A0, what? What is in 8? And then you'll print 5 here. Yeah. And you load and execute this. Do you understand this? You see this? Is this making sense? What was your question? Okay. So now this, this is just you. Uh, you have included it. It's not getting like user what? Uh, input. Okay. So yeah. you want user input? Yeah. Okay. I want to get user input. What input do you want to get? We, we want to get an integer. Okay. Yeah. So how do we do that? We load. Uh, we, yeah, load immediately. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah, five. Uh -huh. Then we. This is what is this is This is First, when we have to read the integers before we. This is what we're doing in line number eleven and twelve. 11, yeah, yeah. Then we. We want to print that. Yeah, I want to print using system. That's one. Huh? So we are here. Yeah. Okay. So if we want to print what the user has has entered, what the user is going to enter, where what are we going to move to A zero? The address of the yeah. integer. Mm. No. Why would you want to move the address of the integer? Okay. We have to put the register which is containing the integer. Which which is? Which is uh, V zero. Okay. To the argument register A zero. Yeah, which is what we've done. Yeah. So if you run this, you're going to print. <laughs> Are we going to graduate in 2022? Right? Something wrong here. We are printing one again. What have we done wrong? We're not printing. We're not printing. Um... <laughs> saying in visual, there's one. <laughs> Well, not, well not. <laughs> do you know why there's one? There? <laughs> this move here should have been here. Do you know why there was one? Yeah, it's it's the it's value of one. Sequential, right? Yeah. This makes sense now, does it? Yeah. I'm deliberately doing this because I'm trying to showcase to you the importance of using temporal registers and not any other funny things you use, right? When you're moving things from special purpose registers, registers that do special things, 
use temp register. So in line number 14, instead of what I did, what I should have done is I should have said here, I should have, I should have said move into register 8, what is in V0. And then here, I should have said move, what is in 8, that doesn't, I'm just saying it's just get into the habit of using temporary registers for whatever computations you're using. Is this making sense now? Is that more to your question? No. Your question is when do we use this cause? Do you understand why we use this yeah, cause? Because I was having some problems. What problems? Find that instead of putting, maybe you put this instruction before this instruction. Don't. Yeah. Follow the rules, right? This is sequential. And no, you no, notice no, but that there are no rules. There are rules. We are learning about the rules. This is yeah, done sequential. What are you talking about? But like, it's not like rules. a reference, like, you use move. <laughs> Before you use load immediate. No, but it says well, some some rules are implicit. It's logic, right? Like like what happened when we printed one instead of the value we wanted to print, because we moved into a zero. What was in v zero and what was in v zero was one. If we had followed the rules, the recommendation of using temporary registers would have avoided the error, the logical error. Is this making sense? Are there any other questions? Is this uh, nice, right? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Why? What is in? Why are we doing this? Yeah. This. Why? Why are we? Why are we spent a lot of time on this lecture series? Why? To understand how calculations are performed in the air. So, but how does this help us understand how calculations are performed? Yes. I do hope when, when people ask ask you these questions, like what are you doing? And you say, Oh, we're using we're using MIPS. And someone asks you, why why are you doing that MIPS, right? You should be able to answer like she did. Explain why you're doing this. You are I mean you want to be in a position where you'll be able to explain to other people how a computer works. And by now you, you understand what's happening here. All oh, this RAM, all these things, this black box, right? Von Neumann architecture, all core components, what happens in the core components, CPU, blah, 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 blah. When you go into the CPU, software, software is loaded into RAM, into RAM, individual instructions are executed, how are those individual instructions are executed, and converted to a machine equivalent, right? Ones and zeros. Oh, but you can't understand ones and zeros, so we dump them down to assembly. It turns out that there's no other way of having a direct translation of those 32 bits, ones and zeros, other than going to assembly. You can convert those 32 streams of ones and zeros into an instruction. Add I, B, I mean B, B and Q, for instance. Well, this is a system call. The next step is understanding how those ones and zeros are going to be translated by the CPU, the different components. Yeah. Just to be empty. Yeah. Why are you doing this? We don't know. Like, we don't want characters saying, it's like calculus. This guy was just like, why did I learn calculus? There was no point. Well, there was, right? Sorry? Sorry? Find that. Why are we doing calculus? <laughs> We're not doing calculus, right? I, I assure you, this would have been much more interesting, I, I think, if, if, um, if there was programming before this, I guess. Yeah, yeah. about this one. Also. What about this one? Why is this instruction uh, having like, why is it in, in between two system calls? Which instruction? Okay, okay this system calls for this one, uh -huh. and this system calls for this one. Yeah. So but why are you giving this instruction a system call? So what thing I, oh, it's used for reading an, an index. Yeah. Yeah, but why are you not putting it together with the other instruction? This one? But we don't, we don't have to, because, because of the rules. The rules say, for system call number five, once you specify that you're interested in system call number five, you just issue Cisco. Okay. Just like you do when you issue when you use system call, system call number ten. The moment the CPU sees, oh, this is in V0 there's five and it's issued Cisco, it knows that it must ask the user for input. And in the case of blink, you type in the input. That input though is going to end up in V0. Before you do other things that are going to override what is in V0. 
move what the user has entered into a temporary register. No, sir. Just a minute. Here, I'm confused. So we have moved everything that is in, in here, in this register, not so. Mm -hmm. Now, when printing out the integer, yeah. so meaning this one is empty, not so. It's not empty. There's still, at this point, mm. you see, move, move copies. You're getting a copy. Okay. <clears throat> Observe. Um, I will... I will say load into eight the value five and then move into nine what is in eight. I won't do that again. If I load and execute them our program here. Register status for nine and ten, nine eight and nine, nothing, right? Run that. What is in eight and five and, and nine? Five. Five. What you've done with the move operation is you get a copy of what is in that register and put it in the desired register. So what that means when you issue the move is the copy that was previous in there will still be in there. Okay, okay. Right, that's what move does. Now, and I know, oh, but move, it's not the move in English where you're saying when you're moving, I'm moving to the new race. It's not like, you know, yeah, yeah. it's like, you know, understand what I mean? Yeah. Maybe it should have been copy or something. So, but this instruction now overwrites what's in here. Yes. Because moving would, have, would would be counterproductive if you were, if you wanted to to move something out of there, it's like you you'd be you'd need an operation to delete what was in the register. But there's no point in deleting because it's just like overwriting. It's it's like think about this for a second. A file, right? You create a file and then you write contents in your file. If you're trying to put additional content in that file, what you can do is you can choose to open that file delete that file, save it, and then start overwriting it. Or alternatively, you can just say, open a new file, write something, and then just do a save, and then select that file that you want to overwrite. Which one is faster? So can like, you say this instruction, like we, we remove this instruction, then we put add, then here we include register zero. Yeah, that's can the, it, it, well, I don't know, can it? It's fine. It can. There's different ways of uh, where are you going, Wupe? There's different ways of uh, see you. There's different ways of doing this. This can work. You're doing the same thing. It's, it's like there's a value in here, but what you're saying is, for you to get a value in here, add zero to what is in V zero. What are you gonna get? The same value. And then put the result in A. Works. Now, for some of these things, I do encourage you guys to actually... Are there people that are going to graduate in 2023? I want you guys to... Wait, that's fine. You want to try this out instead of asking hypothetical questions, right? For you to understand what's going on, you want to try these things that you're asking instead of what happens here. Try them out.